Hey pals, John here with the Lens Pal, and today we're going to look at tilt shift lenses. This lens is not actually broken. I know it looks like it's at all kinds of weird angles and well, it, it is, but that's what tilt shift lenses do. To understand tilt shift lenses, you have to understand that there are two components to them. The first is the tilt aspect. This allows you to take the front element of the lens and decide whether you want it to no longer be parallel with the camera's sensor. Why would you do this? Well, it changes where your field of focus lies. It changes whether that is um, parallel to the sensor and thus giving you a regulated, easy to understand depth of field, or it turns it into a tapering, uh, towards the camera tapering, um, depth of field, which allows you to pinpoint very specific parts of the photo that are in focus. The other aspect of a tilt shift lens is, you guessed it, the shift part. And this doesn't um, change whether the, it doesn't change anything to do with the focus or the depth of field, really. These lenses are capable of projecting a, an image circle that is much larger than the sensor on the camera. And so what you can do is you can say, I want the top half of whatever scene is over here to be in focus on the sensor, or this would be the middle part that you would expect, and then the bottom half. So you can actually use this to create panoramas by taking an image here and slowly moving it through its range, taking several images. One of the things that a lot, but perhaps not all, tilt shift lenses do is they can actually rotate through about 180 degrees. Now some will just rotate once, so with this TS-E24 from Canon, I can rotate here. This I consider this to be the standard position because the badging is up top, so that's 90 degrees one way and 90 degrees the other way. But what we're actually going to do now is cut over to this camera that I have set up on a tripod and I'm going to sort of talk through it as well. So let me get the camera up and running and recording has resumed on the recorder, which is perfect. Okay. So as you can see, I've got this little scene set up in front of me. I've got the lens align charts, I've got some batteries, I've got a little micro SD card reader and lens cap and over here we've got the camera. Now, what you're probably noticing is that there's a lot of room up here and that we're not actually seeing the bottom of the batteries. Now, one easy way to fix that would be to pan, or rather tilt with the tripod like such. And uh, you've probably done this before if you've ever tried to shoot something and be like, oh, it's not quite in the right place in the frame. And that's fine, but what that actually does is it changes your perspective. So instead of having the lines going straight up because you now, this part of the, uh, the scene is further away from center, it actually changes the perspective. It's not really a large enough scene to be able to see it here, but if you've ever tried to take footage of a building, you'll notice how everything goes skewy kind of quickly. With the tilt shift lens, specifically with the shift function, I can actually use the dials on here to adjust which part of the scene is going to be captured on the sensor. Remember that these lenses create a much larger um, circle, imaging circle. They project a much larger, larger circle than is captured on the sensor. So we can actually move this up and down to correctly capture the image. There's a dial on each side and one allows you to move things easily and the other on the opposite side will allow you to lock things into place. So here we're actually a little bit on the negative side on the, so we've um, shifted the lens downwards slightly, allowing us to get this frame in the scene. In fact, I'm actually gonna loosen that up just a touch and come down just a fraction more because perfection is a curse. There we go. All right, so 
with this recording, you can see I've got the focus peaking on. And the focus is starting right here and continuing on back to somewhere where my finger's gonna come into focus any second now. So we've got, we've got like this much of focus. So a couple of inches, maybe two, two and a half inches. And it's all parallel to the image sensor, which is why the entirety of this image, actually slightly, I'm just going to uh, that way, just a touch and get parallel. There we go. So the upright here is more or less parallel to the image sensor, to the front of the lens and the image sensor. So now I'm gonna show you how the tilt functionality works. Remember this is what changes whether the front of our lens is parallel uh, with the sensor and with the rest of the scene. So again, there's, there's dials on the other side, one will lock um, the, the mechanism in place and the other allows me to move it fluidly. And so what I've done is here is I moved just a little bit over a quarter of the way um, through its range of motion from center to just over a quarter of the way to the positive side as it's marked on the lens. And we can see that now the left hand side of this little scene is in focus, but we've lo we basically lost the focus on this part of this right hand side of the scene. And that's because we've shifted our plane of focus. It's no longer parallel with the sensor. It's actually moving. And a weird thing about this is the more, the more you move the lens, the focal plane moves even further. So as I continue to turn this that same way, we completely lose focus on this right-hand side, and we do have it on the left-hand side. But if I move this little guy out of the way, you can see that we have focus here during almost up to this black line on the chart. But if we come across to the other side, which is where my finger is, we can see my finger is completely, if I tilt things back to that's the center right there and we can see everything's nice and sharp in line and then come back this other way we can see that the opposite is true so we now have this side in focus we've got if I move this battery out of the way we've actually got focus all the way up to here but we can see it disappearing in a straight line back that way towards the middle of the target. So what is this useful for? Like I said, this is useful if you have, um, it's mostly used these days for creative purposes. Uh, you may have heard the term toy camera thrown around. Um, tilt shift is quite often used uh, to make large scene scenes appear very small by picking out um, specific elements to be in focus, uh, giving it kind of a, a very sort of shallow depth of field effect when actually you're looking at a pretty wide scene, maybe from up high looking down over a, a town or a countryside, something along those lines. Um, so it's more, the tilt aspect is more creative than the shift aspect, or at least that's how it's used. Now, I did mention earlier that there's no USM or anything denoting autofocus on the Canon lens. We've been using the Nikon Z6 with a uh, with the FTZ converter and a 45 millimeter 2.8D. Um, they call it the PC-E. Uh, that's Nikon's name for their tilt shift lenses over here. Neither of these lenses, uh, nor any of the tilt shift lenses you can find on the market today, actually have also focus capabilities because you are playing around with where that focus point lies, especially when it comes to using the tilt functionality. So don't hold your breath on that one because it, it's a little ways off, although rumor has it Canon is working on one for the mirrorless lineup, which will be a work of engineering, let me tell you. But for what we've got here, um, 
if you're doing anything where parallel lines, straight lines are of the utmost importance and retail photographers, not retail, holy crap. Keep rolling. Um, so who does this lens appeal to? Who, who should be using a tilt shift lens? Well, simple answer is, the most obvious answer is anybody who is in a position where straight lines, parallel lines, perpendicular lines are of utmost importance. People doing uh, realty photo shoots. I'm talking mainly to you guys because you want to be able to get your parallel lines, your points of perspective going absolutely square and true. This uh, uh, tilt shift lenses allow you to do that. As far as tilting side of things, anybody who, like if you want to try something new, try something creative, grab a tilt shift lens. This 45 millimeter from Nikon is actually a macro lens. It's got extremely close focusing. We've got a 24 mil for Canon. We also have a 90 mil Canon and a 24 in Nikon as well. So you can really get creative with your typical wide angle lenses like a 24 mil. It's really hard to get that narrow depth of field as you probably are well aware, but with the tilt capabilities, you can actually pinpoint your, uh, your depth of field, your focal point, and get a completely unique look. The tilt shift lenses are available on our website right now. We have two for Canon and two for Nikon. Our website is thelenspal.com. It's kind of important that I throw that in there. Um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to drop us a line. We are more than happy to help our pals out. And if you want to come by our Winter Garden location, we can grab one of them out for you and show you how it's done. If you've liked this video, please smash that thumbs up and ring the bell. I, I, I don't know. You know what the cool kids say about YouTube videos. Do all of that stuff for us. It really helps. Until next time, I've been John for The Lens Pal, and we'll see you soon.